What's up, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, Kick, Ubu, wherever this video is going to be seen, and YouTube, you know, everybody, everywhere who's ever going to see this. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Matt Lowe, for those who don't know who I am. Um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because of the simple fact that our country is in a very uh, sensitive situation right now. We're facing a lot of various things, and most of it really has to do with my generation. Um, there's a lot of culture clashing that's going on, among other things that's happening. And there's only two people who can speak well about what's going on in the situation. Us as young people, who is happening to on a day-to-day -day basis and who's experiencing it, and then God himself. Nobody can speak your experience better than you can. However, there's nobody really talking about it in the generation. So I guess I'll be one of the ones that's stepping up to. One of the things I want to deal with is, of course, the prejudice that's going on in the country. I have a lot of white associates and I've had a lot of white friends and things like that. And so for all of you guys who are going to see this and for any other Caucasian individual who sees this, understand something because I do believe that there are some people out there who happen to be white and when you see what's going on you know in terms of you know African Americans in terms of my culture and everything like that some of you you know feel burdened by it and I'm here to tell you that's not your burden to carry I want to encourage you that's not your burden to carry that's not your fault. You can't jump in a time machine and go back to the 50s and go back to the 60s and 40s and back to slavery and forever when this thing began, you can't go back and change that. It's not for you to change. It's history for a reason. But what you can do is, in 2015, write a different story. Write a different chapter. For those of you who happen to be Caucasian and you don't have any issues with us as black people, good, great. Congratulations to you all. Teach that to your kids. Teach that to your nephews. Teach that to your grandchildren. Teach that to your brothers and your sisters. Step up and talk to your people who do feel like that. Un get understandings of why they feel like that. You know, and just somehow, some way, get them to see the error and how they're seeing it. Help change their perception. You know, be an influence. Be an impact for them. Yeah, you're going to probably be called nigger lovers because of it. You might get that. Then, you know, some people are not going to hear you at all. But you be the change that you want to see in the world today. That's really all I can say on that situation. For every two of you all that do not have an issue with us as black people, there's about five out there who do. From the policemen to the school teachers to, to the nurses to even the pastors. Don't get it twisted just because you see a lot of Caucasian you know, men or women in the church and they scream and holler about Jesus. <laughs> doesn't mean that they ain't walking around carrying that kind of spirit, that prejudiced spirit inside them against us. It's there. But this is the reason why we as a generation and the reason why us as the body of Christians, for those of us who are Christians, need to come together and pray together, all cultures, not just black Christians, not just white Christians, not just Mexican Christians, everybody to come together and we need to pray together because this is something that's affecting our culture and our world and our ecosystem and everything together. We need to fix this issue, but we can't do it by ourselves. And to be honest with you, there are some white people that are going to see us as black youth who grown up in America, you know, and just see it as that while there are other white people who are going to see us as niggers. They're going to think of us as threats. They're going to think of us as troublemakers and everything else that you can possibly imagine and don't even know us just because we look different or we talk a certain kind of way. So this whole thing has to change. Meanwhile, black people, I find it interesting that we want to go ahead and we want to march when somebody white kills somebody black. And I find it interesting that we walk around with these I can't breathe sweatshirts on and I can't breathe t-shirts and we walk around with the Trayvon Martin t-shirts on. And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I'm not discounting these people's deaths at all because you know what? That's affecting these families even to this day. The people who, who actually lost them, the mothers and fathers, their, their sleep will never be the same. Their lives will never be the same because a child was lost like this. But peep this, though. I find it interesting we can conjure up enough energy to be able to, 
to do that when this kind of situation happened. But what about our own hoods? Because see, on the other end, when you look at the news and when you read the newspaper, you don't really see there was 15 black kids who were murdered over the weekend by white people. No, but you do see there was 15 black youth who were shot over the weekend by other black youth. You do see, you know what I'm saying, that you know, you got people who raping their mothers and grandfathers and grandmothers and all this other kind of stuff and hanging them and doing all kinds of just weird stuff that are done by other black people. And the thing is, is that if we're going to march against that, OK, cool. But then we need to turn right around and take that same energy and go right ahead and march against the issue that's going on in our own neighborhood. We need to stop standing for this stuff. See, what I found is interesting is that we'll take the Facebook and we'll take the Twitter and we'll take our frustrations out on race issues. But what about the inner culture stuff that happens inside of our own hoods? It happened inside of our own households. We play like that's normal and it's not. We need to stop that because it's us killing us. We need to stop that. And we, we've been killing each other, be it emotionally, mentally or physically for centuries. This Thing needs to stop. That was history. In 2015, we need to be the ones that rewrite the chapter as we go forward. I'm here to tell you we need to stop it. All this senseless killing that we're doing for no reason. And for all you Chicago rappers, you know what I'm saying? All, I'm calling you out. Chief Keith and all the rest of you guys, all this trap stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm calling exactly what it is, man. Y'all need to stop with all that because to be perfectly honest with you, hey, I don't have a problem with you representing the struggle. I get that. But if you're going to represent the struggle and you're going to make it out, do you need to go ahead and do a song of some sort to go ahead and represent the solution as well? Because we need a solution to the problem. So, yeah, OK, yeah, we could talk about how we struggle in the hood. But everybody ain't called to be no rapper. Everybody ain't called to be no ball player. Everybody ain't called to that. What about the regular average Joes that's in the hood that do want a better life? They want to go to college. Some of them don't even, some of them need motivation for that. They don't know how they're going to get out. And the thing is, you guys really hold the key because you hold the mic. Everybody listens to you guys. So truthfully, you all need to be the ones to step up and in your music incorporate that there. Okay, so what if people going to look at you like you crazy? We ain't even trying to figure out, well, if this going to sell, that's going to sell. None of that stuff even matters, man. What does matter is lives. Black lives. Black lives do matter. And I know that, you know, there's been some people who have said, well, all lives matter. And that's true. But at the end of the day, when you read the news feeds, it's only the black lives that you see that's being slaughtered. Like lambs and billy goats and so on and so forth. That's, that's what you see. And if for all my older generation, stop teaching us to hate white people. Because at the end of the day, again, the ones that you see today, it's not their fault or what's going on. And for those that are in this generation that are white, that have something against us, nine times out of ten, it was something that they were taught. That's something that was inherited. And if for all my black people, you know what I'm saying, who have something against white people, drop it. Drop it. Drop it, especially if nobody has done anything personally to you. You going based off of, you know, what I'm saying somebody else's information. And I get it because I did the same thing. I walked around for a little while. You know, what I'm saying with some prejudice in my heart. And I ain't never experienced something negative from Caucasian people at all. But I went based off somebody else's experience, somebody else's situation. That's the reason why a lot of us miss our breakthroughs and miss the blessings that God has for us because we're trying to live life through somebody else's words, through somebody else's eyes. Can't do that. You got your own life to live. Everybody's experience is not going to be the same. But one person's experience is no greater than the other person. White people, you're not greater than black people. Black people, you're not greater than white people. Because at the end of the day, we are all people. And we can't leave out the Hispanics and we can't leave out the Chinese folks. We can't leave out any other nationality that's walking on the earth. It's too many of us to name. But all I'm saying at the end of the day is as Mike used to say years ago, man, it's time to start with the man in the mirror. And it's time for us to go ahead and make a change for real. And today, man, it's your boy, Matt Lowe. I hope that this message really goes ahead and bless 
you know, a lot of people. And I pray that with this video, if it doesn't impact you, I pray at least it starts a discussion, starts a movement. Holla at your boy.